Thank you. Thank you very much again. Have a great evening. Bye. Okay, okay, okay. All right, this is all new to me. Wipe my forehead. <laughs> hey, beautiful child of God, I'm Jasmine and welcome to my channel. I am really excited that you're here. I'm trying something a little bit different. I um, am really interested in exploring what kind of platforms I want to use and focus on and for the rest of 2022, so this year. One of the things I want to kind of play around with is the format in which I um, create, whether that's through video, through audio, both etc so i thought this would be a really great chance for me to um sit down try a new format and just have a conversation so as you can tell by the title this is my one year post college graduation update i've done two videos so far i'll link them down below one is about two months after i graduated and another is about six months after i graduated and recently i just surpassed my one year anniversary i guess you can say when it comes to graduating college i graduated from belmont university which is a school in nashville tennessee it's a private christian university and i graduated with a bachelor's of science in corporate communications and a double minor in education and psychology oh thank you sun the cloud has come and covered that really bright sun so hopefully the lighting is a lot better right now after i graduated i ended up interning with a podcast company for the summer and then I was able to stay with the company throughout the fall and a big huge thing that has transpired in my life this this month actually and I shared a little bit about it in my um, I'm back type of video where I kind of give you an update of what was going on during my social media break from YouTube and everything I have a new job and in this video I'm going to explain to you how it went down and give you some thoughts in my, in my own opinions about what it was like navigating my first year out of college. My new job, I didn't officially say, but I am a social media specialist for my church, my home church. I've been going to this church since I was a baby. And how that happened is crazy. It's so crazy. I knew the moment that it was t starting to take place, I was like, I know I have to share about it because it literally has like all the credit goes to god not me at all I'll, all i did was pray i was like god i think that i'd rather have a full-time job with benefits versus working for myself being self-employed as a contractor even though i get to set my own hours and schedule i just think i need that structure but also you know don't want to leave a good thing and lo and behold god answered and more than i ever could have asked for and I have a little timeline on my phone right here and I'm gonna read for you all right so here's how it went down on February 15th let me see yes February 15th I get a phone call out of the blue in the afternoon and one thing about me when I get a phone call or when I see a number pop up on my phone screen and I don't recognize it I don't answer I don't answer the phone because I'm usually like I don't know you uh, why would I answer and you might be spam because we get a lot of you know spam calls but um what was odd was that I had my phone on vibrate and it was on my desk and I was talking to my mom from the stairwell and she randomly was like, your phone's ringing. I said, what? Your phone? Or she said, your phone's vibrating. I was like, what? I didn't even hear it. And I was like, well, how in the world did you hear my phone and you're all the way downstairs? I just thought that was weird. And I went and looked at my phone and didn't recognize the number, but something in me was like answer. Like not, like no one, like there wasn't a voice in my head that said answer the phone. I just felt like I needed to answer the phone, even though I didn't recognize the number, which I'm glad I did. Because it turned out that one of the pastors, the associate, associate pastors of the church, who used to be over the college ministry, which I was a part of, 
he called me and just basically asked me how I was doing, asked me what I was up to now that I've graduated, and he told me that there was an opportunity to do some social media work for the church. And the way he described it at first was more so just kind of some side, a side job in a way or some, a side gig where I'll do some occasional work with, um, for the church if, they, if I wanted to. And I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. You know, I am self-employed. I can take on some extra work. I was kind of looking for extra work anyways. And he, he also told me at the end of it, he was like, you know, I just want to let you know, I'll be fully honest, that there's a possibility that this side gig type of work can turn into a full-time position. I was like, are you, he asked me if I was open to that. And I said, yeah, I'm open to that. Um, again, like I was in that space where I was, I wasn't miserable at my job. I was doing really, really, really well at my job. I was excelling. I was learning a lot. I got along with the people I work with. It's really hard for me not to get along with somebody. And, um, I was doing really well, but I also was struggling about, again, like I said, do I want to continue being self-employed or do I want to be like employed as an employee, um, full-time with benefits and more structured hours? So I was at, in that, in that, I was in that headspace of like looking around for jobs, but never really fully being like, I need a job now. Um, and I said, yes, I'm open to it being a full-time position. I truly genuinely thought, you know, I'm just going to do some side gig stuff for a while and maybe down the line like it was more of a maybe it turn it would turn into a full-time position and not a it is a full-time position that happened I actually (laughs) I took a voice recording after the phone call because I was in shock I literally was in shock to the point where I started getting hot like I was like what is happening like why did this just happen what kind of phone call is this um and I remember getting my phone and putting on the voice note and saying like oh my word, like I literally was whispering, um, let me see, I have it, I have it on my phone, I was whispering, because I was just like in shock of that this was happening, oh my word, okay, so I just got a call, I don't know why I'm whispering, but <laughs> I just got a call out of nowhere from Pastor, I don't know how much I can share, um, so that happened, and then, let's see, on February 18th, I ended up being getting in contact with the HR manager. She got my email, and we had a Zoom call. And I was, I remember, I remember being super embarrassed because on February 18th is where I got my a sty removed from my eyelid, and I, my eye was super bruised and like purpley red and swollen and watering. And I truly was like, oh, I told, I, I truly was super embarrassed. I like. And during the interview or like the conversation, I sat back so she could couldn't tell my eye was swollen, and I almost truly almost came to the meeting with sunglasses on, and I was going to tell her like, "Hey, I got my sty removed today. I saw wearing glasses to spare you from looking at my eye," but I was too afraid to say anything, and I just came in with like normal glasses, and my mom was like, "Oh, your eye's like really swollen." That was just a side note kind of thing. Um, but basically, I got a chance to speak with the HR manager, and she just really just. Wanted to get to know me, wanted to get to know my background and what I was able to offer in terms of social media and my skills and um, gave me a, a space to ask questions. And it turned out to be pretty well. She seemed impressed with what I was able to share with her. It was pretty informal, so nothing super, you know, structured. And that was that. And at that point, there was some time that went went on and I remember journaling in my journal. I was like, I haven't heard back from our church yet. It's been a few days. It's been a week or et cetera. I think it was going on, on almost two weeks since I talked to the HR manager. And I was like, I don't know. They may not want me on the team anymore. And I was just praying. I was like, God, if this is your will, let it be. If not, I'll be okay because I'm not like in a rush to leave my job. Like I'm, I'm in a good place. And lo and behold, um, I get asked to come in. Well, not come in, but I was asked to be interviewed. They asked me to interview with them. And so on March 8th, I had my interview with my church. It was a panel of four people. My pastor was on that panel and I was so nervous. I literally practiced my answers with my best friend like two days before. And then the night before I was up until midnight practicing my answers, not because I wanted to sound robotic, but because, excuse the lighting, but because I wanted to 
be confident in my response and I wanted to anticipate what they would ask and I highly recommend that if you're about to be in the job market if you're about to graduate I highly recommend practicing um, your interview interviewing skills because you really want to present yourself confidently and you want to be able to articulate your skills and what you can offer in, in a very clear and concise way so oh my goodness this lighting is crazy Anyways, I was extremely nervous, and the interview, they said it was going to take an hour long, and I was like, I had to talk for an hour? Oh my goodness, like, that's an introvert's, like, nightmare. <laughs> that was a nightmare for me to be like, oh, I had to talk for an hour about myself. <laughs> I, remember, I remember praying, I practiced with my mom right before I put on a really nice outfit, so I felt confident, and I just, I was like, okay, you know what, God, I'm leaving this in your hands, and I kid you not, Within the first few minutes, I felt so comfortable talking to them. My practice paid off. I felt like, for the most part, I art- articulated my answers pretty well. And um, there were, I think there was one or two where I was like, I wish I could have said something a little bit different. But um, overall, I just felt peace during the, during the interview process. And I was like, there's no way. How in the world do I feel peace when I'm interviewing with four people, including my pastor? And I just, by the end of it, I just felt, you know, I did all that I could do. I just had my first interview for a full-time position at my church okay like at my church it was an hour long we went a little over because I had some questions at the end I just finished like literally I just finished it's 407 it started at 3 and I was like shaking because I was nervous and then I had my fan on because it was hot earlier and then I got cold and I was shaking. I was like, I hope they can't tell I'm shaking. <laughs> I'll keep, this is my record, I'll keep you updated. Mm. Uh, the sunlight. This is why I'm like really interested in just podcasting without video uh, because I don't have to worry about the lighting. Oh my goodness. Please bear with me. I've been on YouTube for four years now. You would think I'd get the lighting right, but... (sighs) Anyways, so that was the interview process. And again, I just prayed about it. And they told me, oh my goodness. We're going to roll with it. All right. This is very real on (laughs) real. But they told me, well, the HR manager told me at the very end of the interview that it would be about three business days before they get back to me. I interviewed one on Tuesday, so that technically that would make Friday the day where I should hear back from them. Tell me why. I'm over here waiting until Friday, and I get a phone call from the HR manager on Thursday. <sighs> Nothing by God. Like, two days. Two days. They ended up making a decision, and she called me, and I actually got this on video, so I'll share this clip with you right now. Oh my. Today's the 10th. I'm good. How are you? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much again. Have a great evening. Bye. she called me and she was like oh my goodness like she basically just told me you know they were really really impressed with me during my interview and they thought I would be a really great fit for the position and she verbally gave me a job offer and I was just like I didn't know how to respond I was so excited and I also know that when someone gives you a job offer it is usually the the best the right thing to do and I'm not telling you what to do but Basically, I was like, can I have the weekend or a few days or 24 or 48 hours to think about my decision? And she said yes. Um, Not that I was going to say no, but I just wanted to like review over the salary that she offered and um, go over the job position and the the, um, just 
the logistics of the job before I said yes because you never want to say yes prematurely and then find yourself in a sticky situation where you realize oh I thought the job was the right fit for me but it's no longer the right fit so I took the weekend because the, she called me on Friday I took the weekend and then of course I talked to my parents they helped me kind of go over the logistics of everything and I gave my official yes that following Monday and then that week I told my supervisor at my first job and it was very bittersweet like I was so nervous and I was praying to God I was like God please help me have the strength to tell him that I won't be working here in the next two weeks and it just so happened that the conversation just naturally flowed to a point where it was it made sense for me to say hey by the way I just got offered a job and I'm putting in my two weeks and then I shared that with the my other bosses who were like the co-founders of the company it was all very bittersweet and they were all very happy for me and it just feels like everything just happened so quickly um those two weeks really f flew by and because I work with clients I had to make sure I had I sent out emails to the clients letting them know in advance that I will no longer be working with them at, at after a certain date and I did all that I could to make the transition easy. Um, leave on a really good note. Like if you're leaving your job, please, please, please leave on a good note. Don't burn bridges. Um, keep that bridge in, that bridge in. Keep that bridge um, open and available and ready for you to cross over if you need to. Because um, you never know. You might find yourself in a situation where you might have to go back to that company and you don't want to leave on a bad note. But April 5th was my last day at the podcasting company and it was really bittersweet because I had really just learned to, you know, the, I learned the workflow and the culture of the, of the company and I had just started getting comfortable in my role. And so part of me was like, am I making a big mistake? Because, I mean, th I just really became good at my job I was thriving it wasn't like I was miserable and not and not thriving it, but it was funny you know sometimes God would give you put you in a space and then uproot you when you least expect it and um yeah I definitely got sad a little bit at the, at the end at the end because I worked with really great people and they took really great care of me and I know we're still connected to this day and they said they always have an open door for me so I'm just really grateful that every job I've had since I was 16 that um I've always been taken care of and I've never been involved in drama or nothing like that so I'm very grateful for the protection that God has over me so fast forward to April 11th and that was my first day at my church from April 6th through the 10th I just took those days off to really relax and it was really good for me because I did a lot of things unplanned and spontaneous I'm not really that I'm not a spontaneous I'm not a spontaneous person. I like my schedules. I like my routines. I like my plans and planners and stuff. But I was really glad that I was able to rest before I started my new job and had my first day. And I, you know, have been learning the ropes and it's been really great. Um, all I can ever say about this job right now that I have working with my church is that I have a lot of peace about it. And that's what I used to know that I'm at where I'm at the place where I'm supposed to be and um, I'm just really excited to see what's going to come from this position the people I'm meeting a lot of people at the church and um, it's crazy how much creative freedom they're giving me to help manage their social media platforms they're literally like they're literally like hey you are the expert in the situation so we're going to rely on you whatever you say pretty much goes unless it's crazy which I'm not going to like suggest anything crazy but um Every single person I've told that I, um, this job, that I got this job to, they were like, oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Like this job is perfect for you. And yes, that's where I am one year after college. I am working for my church in social media. If you were to tell me this um, the day after I walked across the stage, I would have not believed you. I would have not believed you. What a roller coaster this first year has been, honestly. Everything from graduating to my internship to my first job working self employed with a podcast company to my first full time position with benefits working for my church and, church and social media. It's just wild. It's wild. And I'm so glad I was able to capture this experience through video um, that I can look back on and just kind of see where I was because I definitely had some hard moments. It's definitely an emotional roller coaster. I had my moments of missing college and I do miss still miss college. Of course, I miss my friends. I miss my community. Um, and I was really sad in some moments, especially beginning of the year. Um, I miss being, you know, a student and just 
my whole routine and like my lifestyle as a student. I miss that, but you know, I'm slowly learning to embrace this new season. I'm rambling now. So I'm just gonna end this video here. I hope you enjoyed this raw and real one year post college update. Again, like I said, I'm really glad that I was able to capture my experience in now three videos and I hope they are, they are helpful for you. Just before I end this video, I just want to give you a disclaimer if you're still here. Thank you so much. Um, I am in this weird space where I'm trying to figure out how I want to move forward creatively. And part of that is wondering if I want to continue making YouTube videos right now. Um, I'm actually considering not making YouTube videos anymore. And definitely not to say that I'm going to delete this channel or my camera died or to say that um, I might not ever make a video again. But for right now, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what can I give my energy and time to consistently. I feel like I spread myself too thin and that's why I keep taking month long breaks. Um, so bear with me. I have not been the most consistent in the past year and a half, I would say. So um, thank you for your patience for those who are still sticking around. And I will keep you updated regarding what my decision is. Whether I will push through on here on YouTube or I'll try some different. I definitely want, like, might want to try getting on TikTok and um, maybe um, get podcasting a try again and make that, you know, my main thing. I don't know. I just know, I just, I'm figuring out a lot of things and that's just part of what I'm learning in this post-grad life and just life in general. We're just always figuring out things. Okay, I don't know where the video ended, but I'm just gonna say, let me know your thoughts down below if you have any about regarding any tips for anybody who's graduating and trying to navigate their first year out of college. This light is super blinding, so I'm gonna go. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend and your week and I'll let you know what I plan to do in the future. Bye.